So you've got a narrow rib cage, what we'd call a narrow ISA. Now, if you've been watching biomechanics experts who discuss it, you've probably heard this advice. Do gentle exhales with an open mouth like this. And I've actually said it too, because it does make sense, and we'll cover that later. But, and this is the part that almost nobody talks about, the most obvious solution isn't just to exhale softer. It's actually to get stronger at inhaling, you know, to actually expand that narrow rib cage. So in this video, we're gonna break down the incomplete logic of the gentle exhale and give you the actual exercises that you need to improve your inhalation strength and your rib cage mobility. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so to start, a narrow ISA is someone whose lower ribs rest closer to a 60 degree angle. The superficial abdominal muscles like the external obliques tend to rest in a shorter position and the ribs are more oblique like this rather than flat like this. Now the reason you're gonna hear to avoid aggressive exhales is because the diaphragm is going to tend to rest low in these individuals. But this is only partially true. Narrow ISAs may appear to have a lower resting diaphragm, but it's not because the diaphragm is too strong or pushing down excessively per se. It's actually because the rib cage shape is more collapsed and the diaphragm lacks that leverage and strength to lift the ribs outwards so it sits low by default. For this reason, gentle exhales can help you avoid squeezing an already squeezed rib cage even further, and so it is a good recommendation. But here's the thing. A rib cage that's already narrow just by the bony shape is basically more exhaled by default when we're looking at the lower ribs. So telling someone who's structurally narrow to focus on changing their exhale seems to be focusing on the wrong side of the equation. It's like struggling to play an accordion that's already half collapsed. The problem isn't just to squeeze it in more gently, it's actually to actively pull it open first. And the same is true with a narrow rib cage. The fix isn't just compressing it less, it's actually building the strength to expand it. I mean, let's think about it. If you're focused on the exhale component, then you're just not addressing the most glaring issue which is that you have a narrow ISA. It literally can't open up. Okay, so like we said, if you've got a narrow ISA, your diaphragm isn't too strong. It's actually too weak to expand your lower ribs out against the tight external obliques and superficial abs like your rectus abdominis. It just ends up stuck low because it can't lift those ribs outward. Now you'll hear a lot of people refer to this behavior of superficial ab activity more broadly as anterior compression but they'll make a mistake of generalizing anterior compression to mean compression of the entire anterior chain of muscles. They'll throw the neck in the equation saying that it's overactive because the abs are pulling down. And again, this is only partially true. In reality, it's more like a tug of war. We have too much downward pull and not enough upward pull. So it's not that your scalenes and SCMs are too dominant, they're often just undertrained and can't elevate the upper ribs against those tight intercostals and abdominal muscles. Lack of upward pull is what causes your whole rib cage to stay small. Listen, the small rib cage equation is pretty simple. Pulling down at the lower ribs plus the inability to resist at the neck equals a small rib cage. This means that if you want your narrow rib cage to actually open, you can't just avoid compressing it more by doing gentle exhales because this is only gonna take care of that first part of the equation. You've also got to build strength in your inhalation muscles, like the diaphragm, the scalenes, and the SCMs, to be able to lift that rib cage up. All right, so to do this, we can use specific breath work and exercises. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a few of my favorites. But if you wanna build neck strength and improve respiration, then go ahead and grab my new neck protocol. It's the progressive neck program that I designed for myself to overcome 15 years of chronic neck symptoms. And right now, I'm giving you the Breathwork Breakthrough 7-Day Challenge as a bonus. Inside, you'll learn all the essential breathing techniques that you need to improve inhalation strength and rib cage mobility. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the exercises. All right, so this is one of my favorite beginning exercises and it does require a piece of equipment. This is an inspiratory muscle trainer, which you can order online and I'll put the link down below in the description. But if you don't wanna order one of these, you can also use something like a coffee straw or you could just purse your lips together to increase resistance. The general idea here is that we increase resistance coming in to then facilitate activity of the diaphragm as well as those other inhalation muscles like the SCM and scalenes. All right, so now I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. You're gonna start off by bringing your head back over your rib cage. As you do this, you're gonna tuck your chin and you'll notice that your chest comes up reflexively. Then once you're in this position, we're gonna go with a really gentle exhale either through the corners of your mouth or through your nose 
just letting any tension go and not trying to force it at all. This is gonna make it so that we don't get too much compression here at the lower ribs. Then from that position, we're gonna pause briefly and then inhale, trying to keep the head over the rib cage as we do that, feeling the diaphragm push down into the abdomen, as well as those neck muscles lift that upper rib cage up and back. Now again, we're gonna keep the head over the rib cage as we do that. We're gonna go as much as we can, feeling all that expansion, pause for a second, and then do a nice gentle exhale, just letting the air go. So once again, we're not squeezing in through this lower rib area. And then we're gonna repeat. Inhaling again, feeling the diaphragm push down into the abdomen. As that neck pulls the upper rib cage up and back, we'll go as long as we can, getting as much expansion as possible. Then pause. Then we're gonna let that air go relatively passively and repeat one more time. Nice strong inhale, feeling the diaphragm go down, neck muscles come up and back. And then once we've completed our reps, we can relax and we're ready to move on to the next one. All right, so this second exercise is the Chaplin Wall March. And this is where we're gonna increase the demand on those neck muscles to help us assist in lifting those upper ribs. So we're gonna set up with the head on the wall, a towel roll if it makes it more comfortable. We'll do a gentle chin tuck. And then from this position, we'll just get used to loading the neck, doing a couple of deep breaths. So we're gonna take our breath in through the nose, feeling the diaphragm go down, as well as those neck muscles engaged to lift those upper ribs up. Now, if you're able to tolerate this and it feels relatively stable, then we're gonna add a march. If it feels like too much, you can just continue to do these breath cycles. Now, once we go into the marching, we're gonna lift one knee up at a time, and we're gonna avoid any turning of the head and neck from side to side. This is gonna induce a gentle rotation of the body below the head and neck, which is gonna help us to restore even more mobility in the upper rib cage. As we do this, we can also pair the breathing. So we inhale as we lift the knee up, which is gonna further increase demand on the front of the neck, and then exhale as we return. Then we'll perform the same breathing cycle as we go left to right, repeating that march until we feel like we're losing the head position or we begin to shake. All right, so this last exercise is where a lot of this is gonna integrate. We're gonna bring a reach into this to really assist those upper ribs in moving up and back. Now, if you were unable to tolerate that second exercise, this might be a bit much and you can keep your head supported. But if you were able to tolerate it, you're gonna begin by bringing your head and neck off the back of a bench or table, and then we'll go through the rest of the cues. You're gonna tuck your chin here just a little bit to stabilize. Then we're gonna inhale as we bring the weight up and back overhead, trying to keep the lower rib cage on the support surface if we can. And then we'll exhale to return. We're gonna repeat this for as long as we can without losing that chin tuck or when we begin shaking. Inhale back, reaching up and back, maintaining that head and neck in a neutral position, rib cage down, then exhale to return. We'll do a few more reps, inhale, reaching up and back, rib cage staying anchored, causing the upper rib cage to move relative to the lower rib cage, then exhale to return and repeat once again until you lose that neck position or you begin to shake. All right, so to recap, if you're narrow, sure, gentle exhales are gonna stop you from over squeezing those lower ribs, but that's just addressing one side of the equation. But if you actually wanna change your rib cage, you've gotta build inhalation strength. First in your diaphragm, so it pushes the lower ribs out, then in your SCNs and scalenes, so they lift the upper rib cage up, and then teach your rib cage how to expand under load. That's how you go from a compressed, narrow ISA to actually someone who can expand their rib cage. So again, if you want a proven system that does this, go ahead and grab the new neck protocol. As always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all the things to help the algorithm help me help more people. And until next time, peace.